Hi, hello everyone. I am Dev Kumar and coming to our next topic, the third topic. As we already discussed the first two topics, that is one parts of speech and second one, pronoun as a person, number and case. And now as part of the five series of videos, this is our third topic, helping verbs and it is also known as auxiliary verbs. So today we are going to discuss about that. I think many times you might have heard of auxiliary verbs, right? Helping verbs, right? What do you think about helping verbs? Generally, am, is, are, were, these are helping verbs according to your view. But there are still many more helping verbs and many more types also. So, let us look about helping verbs in detail today. So, first of all, helping verbs. What is the definition of helping verbs or auxiliary verbs? First of all, helping verbs are used along with, together with the main verb. Main verb means either it, it must be V1 present tense or v2 past or v3 past participle or v4 present progressive so helping verbs are used to assist main verbs why why helping verbs should assist main verbs the reason is to express the tense means time and mood of the main verb so to understand this let us discuss some examples and before going to examples there are many types of helping verbs in that the first type is b forms so what are B forms? Am, is, are, was and were. These helping verbs are considered as B forms and there is a rule for B forms. B forms always accept either V3 or V4. You have to write, you have to use past participle or present progressive verbs after B forms based on the voice. If the sentence you are writing is active voice, you should use V4. If the sentence you are writing is in passive, you should use V3. These are the fundamental rules you should use while writing English statements. And then coming to the examples, the first example is uh, he is teaching. If you observe carefully, is is the helping verb here. Is is a B form and B forms is one of the types of helping verbs. Now after is, if you identify the verb, it is teaching present progressive form. That is a V4 form. Because here subject is doing the action, the person, the pronoun, he is doing the action. So it is active voice. As it is active voice, I used V4 here. I cannot use V3. I, I gave here two options. But you should not use any one of these two because there is a rule which one you should use either V3 or V4. The rule is very clear if the sentence is active, I mean if the subject is doing action, you should use V4. If the subject is receiving action or something is done to the subject, then we must use V3. That is the difference between the first one and second one. Here if you observe, here the helping verb is was. Here the helping verb is is and both are B forms. If you observe the list is is also B form, was is also a B form and the rule is very clear. After B forms you have to use either V3 or V4 but it is not as per our wish. It is as per the rule. He is teaching. See the action is being done by the person. Action is being done by the subject. So, definitely we must use V4 only. And coming to the second case, I was invited to the party. If you observe carefully, I didn't invite anybody, but I was invited by somebody. So, it is passive mode. So, if the statement is in passive mode, here subject is not doing any action. In first statement, subject is teaching, he is teaching. But in second statement, I am not inviting anybody. I was invited to the party by somebody. So somebody did the action and I being subject received the action. So this is the difference. If the statement is inactive, use V4. If the statement is in passive, use V3. This rule must carefully be remembered in your minds because whenever you write answers to some questions, most of the students are making mistakes after B forms some of you are using V1 after B form some of you are using V2 V1 and V2 never come after B forms this is the basic and fundamental rule while using B forms and you cannot use whatever helping verb you wish after B forms so only V3 or V4 so let us look uh, two more examples for B forms. As we already discussed, B forms accept only V3 or V4. Here if you observe carefully, the B form is verb and the verb after B form is in present progressive form that is a V4 form. 
so why did i use we for form here again the same rule because subject who is watching tv answer is they so subject is doing action subject is performing the action so the same rule again the statement is in active mode so i used v4 after v4 and coming to the last example she was punished by the teacher if you observe was is the b form here and the verb after b form here is a third form you cannot assume this is second form because as i already mentioned b forms never accept v2 so punished is not v2 here it is absolutely v3 then my question is again the same why did i use v3 here because action is not being done by the subject she if you read the statement fully she was punished by the teacher who punished no question teacher punished not the subject that is why it the statement is in passive mode so as per the rules if our statement is in passive mode we must use v3 form so this is very clear difference like once again i am concluding if the statement is active i mean if the work is being done by the subject we must use v4 after b forms if the action is done to the subject then we must use v3 after b forms and let us look about the second type of helping verbs that is do forms have you ever heard this name do forms do you know any information about do forms do forms are of three total number 1 do number 2 does and did see if you observe the common pattern here is they begin with letter d so all these are do forms and there is one important rule for do forms do forms this three always accept v1 that is present tense after them we cannot of course we should not use any verb except v1 most of the students i have observed many times they will use v2 form after do forms i didn't knew the answer i didn't called you i didn't ate my lunch i didn't took your pencil all such statements are absolutely grammatically wrong because the do forms never accept either it may be present tense or past tense here in this two are present tense helping verbs and did is past tense helping verb though did is past tense after did we should not use v2 because did belong to do form and all do forms accept only the present tense verb that is v1 here are the examples to understand better how do forms work first one do you know my name if you observe carefully here the statement began with do form do and the verb i used here is no and that is present tense form v1 so here the rule is fulfilled do form always accept v1 so here i used v1 do you know my name if you ask do you knew my name then it will be wrong coming to the second one he doesn't take permission here hi i used does you may get doubt why didn't i use do here because it is third person singular as we already discussed in the previous topic pronoun he is a third person singular and whenever our subject is third person singular we should not use do or we should not use any other helping verb we have to use only do plus es because it is third person singular and we are writing the statement in present tense these are the two rules if the subject is a third person singular and the tense is present we must consider does only that is why i have taken does here he don't take permission if you say like that or if you write like that the sentence is totally wrong so now the example is he doesn't take permission here do form is does and take is present tense that indicates v1 so here again the rule is fulfilled coming to the next third example they didn't want my advice see now i have used here past tense do form did is do form in past tense now observe the verb that i have used here want is first form of verb that is present tense they did not want my advice so no need to use v2 you may think sir did is past tense sir then you have to use past tense so that is not the rule the rule is the sentence must contain only one past tense so did is already past tense so we should not use another past tense in the statement so we have to use only v1 irrespective of the do form and then fourth one she doesn't confess her mistake 
here also i used does i didn't use do same rule like second example she is third person singular and i have written the statement in present tense so i used here does now does is a do form and the verb i have used here is v1 and hence the rule is fulfilled here also after do form we use only v1 so this is very important rule and the three types of do forms are do does did they always accept v1 after them so just we have completed the first two types of helping verbs and this is third form the first two are first we have discussed about be forms second one do forms and third one have forms and another name for have forms is perfect verbs so there are three perfect verbs three have forms namely has have and had if you observe these helping verbs begin with a h a and there is a rule very important rule for every type of helping verb there is a rule for be forms we have seen they accept only v3 or v4 after them for do forms we have seen a rule that they accept only v1 after them uh, likewise for have forms also there is a rule and have forms always accept v3 past participle the third form of the verb after them i mean after have forms we should use only third form of the verb here are the examples first one i have completed my tasks observe carefully have is the perfect form have is the have form here and the verb i have written have is v3 don't assume that it is v2 because the rule is very clear we cannot use v2 after perfect verbs so it is absolutely v3 and among these three perfect verbs these two are present tense has have are present tense helping verbs and had is past tense have form see observe here if the subject is singular we use has and if the subject is plural we use have but there is an exception for one case if the subject is first person singular as we already discussed in the previous topic the first person singular is i so if the first if the subject is first person singular as per the rules if the subject is singular we have to use has but there is an exception for first person singular only for i if the subject is i even though it is singular we should not use has we have to use have only i have to go i have to teach i have to call i have to finish my work so like this we have to use don't be confused and don't use has after i because it has an exception if the subject is first person singular i then we must not use has for every remaining subjects which are singulars then definitely we must use has and if the subject is plural we must use have in present tense so according to that rule i have used have here i have completed my tasks coming to the second example she had asked to finish her project first here had is the perfect verb from the above list we can easily recognize that and observe the verb i have written after had it is v3 form as per the rule and then coming to third example they have never expected this bad effects adverse effects if you observe carefully i have used have here and even in the first example also i have used have but subjects are different here subject they is plural here subject is singular but i used the same have form for both the subjects this is what the rule just now i have mentioned for plurals we have to use have for singulars we have to use has but exception for i we should use only have and coming to fourth one he has left the home just now so here has as per the rule he subject is singular so i used singular perfect verb here it is not first person singular if it is first person singular i then definitely we have to use have only i have left but our subject is not first person he is third person third person singular so we have to use singular have form only he has left the home just now 
and coming to the last example we had shared the property among us there is no such problem with the past tense have form because for singular subjects we use had for plural subjects also we use had only in past tense but in present tense it is a different case so had is the perfect verb now have form and the verb that i have used here are v3 see have accepts v3 here has accepted v3 here had also accepted v3 so finally have forms are three has have had and they always accept v3 past participle the third form of verb after them so and the very last type of helping verbs is modal verbs there are some pairs of modal verbs that i have written here will and its past form would shall should can could may might must had to has to have to and ought to all these verbs together known as modal verbs and there is an important rule like every type of modal verbs here modal verbs always accept v1 after them this is the only verb that modal verb accepts and here are the examples see observe will shall can and may in these four examples and observe the verbs that i have written go is v1 here expect is v1 here dance is v1 and here rain is v1 so hence the rule is fulfilled in all these four examples i will go to school next month so will accepted here v1 that is go and here we shall respect elders so shall is a modal form and it accepted v1 there and third example they can dance eight hours at a stretch without any pause so here can is modal form and the verb that i have used here is v1 form and then it may rain today here may is modal verb and the verb next to it is v1 rain and coming to the functions of this modal verbs each modal verb will do each function here suppose a will indicates a futurity the works which we are going to do in future will be expressed using the modal verb will and shall should be used to express obligations our responsibilities whereas can and could this pair can be used used to express our abilities or to ask permissions or to give permissions also you can go you can use can like that can i come in sir it is used to ask permissions i can do that it is used to express our ability our capability and may might are used to express possibility just now i have written an example here it may rain today i am not guaranteed for that i am not giving any guarantee it may rain or it may not rain so it is just mere expressing possibility and coming to must it is used to express the things that we must do mandatorily and even had to has to have to are used to express obligations and compulsory works and ought to is used to advise somebody you ought to respect elders even to give orders also we use should and ought to to order someone to give orders so these are the different functions which we will discuss in our next video but here the main thing is modal verbs will would shall should can could may might must had to has to have to ought to all these list will come under modal verbs and modal verbs accept only v1 we should not make any grammatical mistake while writing so till now we have discussed the types of helping verbs so there are four types namely be forms do forms have forms and modal verbs and now division of helping verbs based on tense and number now we have all the list of helping verbs with us total be forms we know and we know have forms do forms modal verbs everything now we have to distinguish all these helping verbs based on the tense we have to know which tense the particular helping verb belong to because if and only if we know the tense of the helping verb then only we can decide the tense of any sentence so identifying 
recognizing the tense of any sentence is very mandatory in order to recognize the tense helping verb will help us to know the tense so that is why it is very important so now i have written everything here helping verbs division based on tense and based on number first let us see based on tense the division of helping verbs i have included all types of helping verbs in present tense if you observe carefully am is are has have do and does are the present tense helping verbs if you observe i have included all types see carefully am is are these three are b forms already we have discussed am is are was were these helping verbs are b forms now i have written three b forms here out of five because out of five b forms three b forms belong to present tense and the remaining two was were belong to past tense and then coming to next two has and have these are have forms are another name perfect verbs so present tense perfect verbs has have present tense be forms am is are and present tense do forms do and does so i have included all types under one tense listen carefully be forms are there have forms are there do forms are there before this we have this divided based on type now i mixed all the types i divided based on the tense even be forms present tense past tense are there even in perfect verbs have forms present past forms are there even in do forms present past forms are there so i have written clearly here this is the difference coming to past tense helping verbs was were had and did these four are the past tense helping verbs again observe carefully was were these two belong to past tense be forms and had belong to past tense have form or perfect verb and did is past tense do form so based on tense not based on type based on type already we have discussed that now based on tense and then future tense we use will or shall to indicate or to express the actions that are going to happen in near future and now coming to helping verbs based on number number means number refers to singular or plural now we have to divide these helping verbs into singular plural which helping verbs belong to singular which helping verbs belong to plural again tense present tense singular helping verbs plural helping verbs in the same way past tense singular helping verbs and plural helping verbs first present tense singulars already we know present tense helping verbs now we have to divide which are singular and which are plural see am is are has have among these helping verbs am is has these three will fall under present tense singular helping verbs and are have these two belong to present tense plural type coming to the next one past tense singular was and had are singular helping verbs in past tense so i have written here and the remaining were had they these both helping verbs belong to plural in past tense so this is a very important topic so with this we have come to end of this topic so please make notes be ready practice everything because when the by the time you come to school we are going to check everything so listen carefully note down everything practice with your own examples okay